Fox network. Many people have the public perception that Fox only talks to uh, toothless, squirrel-eaten, reactionary homophobes, and you know, here we have a couple of atheist, liberal science types. So. Well, how do these these two things? Well, fit together? that's because they're thinking of Fox News, which does all those things. <laughs> right. But this is Fox Television, which has given us The Simpsons and Family Guy and so much more. And uh, we were initially surprised and then realized that it is the right next thing to do, and Fox knew that. Yeah. And if I may just say uh, one additional thing, and that is that I've just received the response from standards and practices to our scripts. And I would say that when you see the show, you'll think, you know, we're not pulling any punches. And the only thing that they were concerned about was, was anybody inhaling <laughs> on the show and uh, whether or not there was any frontal nudity. Primate nudity. And angel nudity. Angel nudity. Yes. Uh, cherub nudity. <laughs> frontal. And uh, apart from that, they not only approved every script, but they said, we can't wait to see it. So no little boys peeing in the cosmic film. <laughs> That was the problem. <laughs> that, you, how did, have you sneaked a look at one of the scripts? No, I'm just surmising from my vast knowledge of cherubim. Yeah, what they, what they do, what they have a tendency to do. No. So anyway. Um, the cherubiverse. Yeah, right. there you go. Right. Well done. Right. right. Well, you know, we're considering, on Neil, perhaps on Dancing with the Stars in launching the series. And there might be frontal nudity, uh, at least from waist up. So yeah. we haven't ruled it out. Or amongst just, that wouldn't be a female box. and some of the yeah. male members of the audience. Uh, yeah. You know, the original, the, to Carl and Anne's credit, um, it found its own way to the success over 34 years. And now, after all this time, is, is worldwide, continues to be watched all over the world. So we have a high bar. Having said that, um, the entire resources of Fox and News Corp and two global sponsors with uh, some heft, one announced, uh, Samsung, uh, promises that uh, Cosmos, a space-time odyssey, uh, will live on every platform for quite a long time to come and hopefully um, meet, perhaps exceed the uh, high bar that the original set. Given that it is on Fox, which is major network and... And National Geographic. And, and National Geographic, thank you for that. And with an, an international distribution, the, uh, there are resources put behind this that includes highly talented filmmakers who were, who were participants in this effort. And it's not just, okay, who has a camera? Put it on me while I'm talking. No, it's let's th you know, think this completely through in the way cinema is created. And so when you have the full portfolio of Hollywood to bring to bear on telling science stories, uh, that's, that, I think we've earned the right to expect the high bar that we're reaching for, to, to expect that yeah. we reach that high bar. Don't want to overstare our welcome. But I just want to add, and I'm so glad you said that, because we have Brandon Braga, who has proven to be a fantastic collaborator and whose bona fides I need not tell you. We have Bill Pope, who uh, was the director of photography for the Matrix movies and many more, a legendary. And we have movie stars doing the voices of uh, the heroes of knowledge who appear, whose stories we tell. In the animations. In the yeah. animation. And mm -hmm. so, uh, and not to mention the animation and producing skills of the great Seth MacFarlane, who is, uh, was centrally involved in making this happen. Mm -hmm. So And helping us bring it to Fox. Yeah. yeah. And we are so looking forward to seeing it. Can't wait. Thank you all for talking to us today. All right, thank great you. to Thanks see you, Dave. Nice really, see you. really good to mm -hmm. see you again. Mm -hmm. So, sitting next to me is Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. You know this guy, right? Earth was spinning the correct direction, except a little too fast. Any people on it would have just flung off. <laughs> and You also have seen him on TV, blowing away any host who sits next to him. He is a podcaster, uh, and he, in his youth, was a pretty good astrophotographer. A wrestler, and I'm thinking a dancer. A dancer, too, yeah. <laughs> and he's one of the best chefs I've ever known. I don't, because people then come all come to the house, you know, so I don't even say that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I just want you to, from my point That's of view. That's just between us. You don't. can cook. You can really cook. Next to Neil is Annie Drian. She was one of the three writers, along with Carl Sagan and Steven Soder, on the original Cosmos. 
She also was responsible for that music that is on that gold disc on one of the two voyagers, and one of them, as we know, has just left the domain of the sun. It's out there in interstellar space, so send more Chuck Berry. And, yeah. <laughs> and she was a producer on Contact with Jody Foster. And next to Annie is my old boss, Mitch Cannell, who... Uh, Great to see you. That's burn the negative, collect the insurance. <laughs> you have a good memory. Google that. <laughs> you see where that goes. 